For brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, I'm Cuba Libre, and welcome back to Let's Play Mark of the Ninja. So let's jump into stage three here, Oshi City. Karajan must be close, but we still need to locate him. Alright, here we go. There's a mechanic, a uh, new, well, it's introduced to you right now, where you can, uh, I'm looking at the seals here, make sure I know what we're doing in terms of bonus stuff, uh, <coughs> where you can hang from a grapple point. The biggest advantage of doing this is that if you kill a guy while hanging, it gives you 600 points as opposed to the 400 of a uh, normal stealth kill. It can also terrorize people Steer if they see it. The dogs. They can sniff you out even in the darkness. Now, dogs, that's a whole new thing. Now you see that purple uh, purple radius that it gives off, that's its smell radius. And it can smell you uh, even if you're in the dark or hiding. So it's just like perfect detection within that range. Now, if a dog is distracted, it won't sniff you. So, a very and you can knock them out. You you don't kill them. You you knock them out. I guess. Even this game where you like murder people in the face with the sword is too squeamish to actually have you kill a dog. But any anyway. Um, so if you distract the dog, you can approach it from behind and and stealth, quote unquote, kill it, knock it out. Uh, without problems. A um, couple u unique mechanics about dogs. Um, if they smell you, they'll bark, but if they can't count an alarm. So even though the dog saw me, uh, I only get 200 points instead of 400 points for knocking it out, but it doesn't count as an alarm. Since it's not a human being, it's not intelligent, it can't use a radio. So it can't uh, can't call in alarms. Now, one of the bonus objects on this is to put uh, dead or unconscious gar hide guards' bodies in uh, these dumpsters. There's five dumpsters in the level. You have to use each dumpster. You don't have to hide five guards' bodies. You have to use each of the five dumpsters. If you use one multiple times, it doesn't count. Um, so here's the dog is sleeping. I'm afraid of... There's a bird's nest. I'm afraid of disturbing it. Uh, and waking it up. But you can just walk up to the dog. I, I realized. Looking at it. Right, so uh, when it comes to dogs... Ooh, that was close. <laughs> One reliable strategy for taking care of them is to take out all the guards first, then you can just walk up to the dog and beat it up, because it can bark all day long, but it's not going to actually hurt your your rating by causing an alarm. On the other hand, if the guards are still around, and, they, and the dog barks at you, uh, it will put the guard on alert, and if he sees you, then he calls in a real alarm, which is very bad. So, uh, Generally speaking, you want to take out guards and then dogs, rather than the other way around. This is a tough situation because... Anytime guys are just standing there facing each other, it's always tough. But, that's why we have our uh, permanent distractions, a.k.a light bulbs. And this is why I never carry noisemakers. One of the levels, I think after this, has a bonus objective that's They're do not break any doors. lights. Try to pick the lock. Picking locks is awesome. It's 250 free points. If you see a, a locked anything, pick it. 
there's no reason not to. Even if you don't actually want to go in that door ever or open it, you might as well just pick it and get the free points. It does not automatically open when you pick it, so uh, you're not exposing yourself to whatever's behind the door. Here's our first scroll. Just have to play a little game with the laser here. You can probably run quick enough to get underneath the laser and back out. But why do that when you can just play it safe? One cool thing when you're dragging a body, you can open doors without dropping the body, even though it's the same These button. These poems tell the story of the mission that made Hisomu a legend. The game is intelligent enough. A starless night, an end kindness of ravens, lands along the wall. New enemy type. As long as he has a shield to hide behind, I wouldn't take him head on. Try to get behind no, him, I heard something or above him. Of course, this is a stealth game, so we never. Someone, hey, I oops! It's just one of those oopses. <laughs> Such you get for not uh, being careful and uh, checking every corner before you jump in. Um, so these new guys, you don't attack anyway. It's a stealth game. Why would you ever attack anything from the front? That's crazy. I guess you could play the game that way. Uh, there's tools and suits and stuff later on that somewhat enable a combat heavy place up. I don't know why you would do that. Um, more importantly is that the flare gun that he has. When he gets distracted, he will uh, shoot a flare at wherever the distraction is and light up the area. So that can be irritating. It's usually actually not that important. Um, generally speaking, when you make a distraction, you do it away from you to get guys to walk away from you so you can stab them in the back. So the flare isn't really a huge deal. Um, but that's when you cause a distraction on purpose. When you cause a distraction by accident, it can, it can be a problem. And here's the challenge room in this level for the next scroll. <laughs> so I slightly misjudged uh, how far that laser uh, would go, would cut. The idea of this challenge is pretty simple. There's actually three switches, and they each open two of the doors, so it's one of those puzzles where you have to know which uh, switch is to pull to open the three doors to the scroll. Um, the lasers you can just turn off, so all you have to do is get through them once, and then it's not an issue. Then you just have to figure out the switches thing. By complete and utter luck, I pulled the exact two correct switches, so I didn't have to futz around with it. That is, you know, I figured it out the first time I played through the game. Laughing guards spill outside with joy to meet the eyeless faces. Um, man, this guy just reads the poems in the worst possible way. Anyways, uh, but this time, I mean, I did, I didn't remember it or look it up or anything. It was just complete fucking luck. <laughs> but thanks. Thankfully, thanks. Thankfully for all you guys watching, uh, it was quick. See, now I'm a little more after that one <laughs> mess up at the beginning. A little more careful about uh, peeking over ledges. I like these guys who are just sitting and chilling out. Pretty anal here about farming for points. At this point, I'm, I think I'm actually still under the impression that I have to put five bodies in a dumpster rather than do five dumpsters, but anyways. All right. And here is our upgrade screen. Now, this is where you spend the seals that you earn in order to earn upgrades. On the left, you have techniques. It sort of just enables your guy, gives you new abilities. The top part is mostly stealth kills. This is what you want to prioritize. You want to prioritize new kinds of stealth kills. It makes you a lot more 
um, versatile, and it's just easily the most important thing of the game. The bottom half is some random stuff and some combat-oriented stuff, which you should not even give a shit about, unless you're doing some kind of crazy combat character. Um, so I always just get that stuff last. <clears throat> the middle, um, not only can you buy new distraction items eventually, but you can also, each one has, there's four of them, and each one has an upgrade that makes it a lot more versatile. Um, and the attack items, same thing, there's three of them, each one has an upgrade that makes it more versatile. Right now, barely anything's unlocked, except a couple of new techniques. We've got this Hangman Sam, this is the one I was talking about where it allows you to, uh, kill people while dangling from the grapple. Extremely important. Not only does it give you more points, but if anyone sees the hanging corpse, it uh, terrorizes them, which doesn't tell you. But that is an excellent ability and well worth buying. Second, we have Emperor's Abyss that allows you to uh, stealth kill people while hanging directly underneath them. So either from vents or if you're hanging on a ceiling underneath that a guy's walking on, you can kill them now. Here's the next three set of upgrades. You have your style, and then you can choose your distraction item or your attack item. Right now, we don't have any to pick from, um, but eventually you unlock new suits on the style column on that left side. The suits generally are of the, uh, there's one advantage but one disadvantage variety. None of them are straight upgrades, and in fact, for a typical playthrough of the game where you're going to be wanting to be stealthy and doing stealth kills, the default suit is actually Look at all the guards patrolling always the near best, that in my town. opinion. And see those antennas on the roof? It must be a communication tower. There could be something inside to help us find Karajan. So, I recommend that you use the default suit for your first time through the game. The others have their uses. I will talk about them more as I unlock them. For now, all we've got is the basic stuff. And now we're going to pick all these patrols apart. I think we'll get to show off the hangman's hymn here. Now, this is actually, uh... I don't really think the, uh... Weights intended to be used. You just dangle a tiny little bit down. But hey, it's 200 more points. There's no reason not to do that when you can, as opposed to the regular old stealth kill. I did jump into that light on purpose just to distract that dude out of the way. I could have tried to do another hangman's hymn with that grapple point above, but I didn't want to risk it. And this guy stays still, makes him an easy target. And that guy in the corner, very devious. If you don't go through the vent here, it's very easy to jump down to kill that guy in the middle, not realizing there's a dude in the corner there. Always check your corners. The one thing that guard AI doesn't do in this game is care when other guards are gone. Um, again, that's just sort of a concession to the uh, the 2D stealth gameplay, I think. It just makes it smoother. It makes it easier for you to run around and kill everyone like a ninja without worrying about it. But uh, it is slightly ridiculous when a dude is standing right next to a dude in a little gap where there's nowhere for either of them to go. And one is suddenly disappears, and the other one just doesn't give a shit. But that's stealth games for you. Oh, sleepyhead. I think this is one of the only sleeping guards in the whole game. I think there's one in a chair later on. I don't know, it's weird. You can just walk up to him and stealth kill him, because he's asleep. I really don't know what the purpose is, except to add flavor to the game. Hey, I heard you were on the ninja raid. Bet. Now yeah. this... I got a trophy on the one. This is a tough situation. Guards are looking right at each other. There's another guard on the left, so if I jump to the middle where the light is dangling, that guard on the left can see me. It's it's an issue. So this is me trying to figure out exactly... So I can't get through the middle at all. I can't get around to the other side. Because I do that guard on the left will instantly see me. If I just kill one, the other will see him. 
so it's time to use an item. I admit, the noise noisemakers do come in handy every once in a while. Go check that over there. It's better than nothing. And I do the hangman's hymn just for the extra points. Why not? Now, in order to get that guy on the left, I guess I could use another noisemaker to his left to make him turn around. But, other than that, the only other option is to go all the way around. Because, there's no way to get through that light without him seeing me. And now we can go into the installation. One important thing about grappling it allows you to access things without touching the floor. Get the count ready to evacuate just in case. Oh, and we left this tracking device in building six. You know, the little gizmo that'll find him in case he gets nabbed. We send a man to get it. That's it. If we get our hands on the tracking device, it'll lead us straight to Karajan. So now we have to get this tracking device to find Karajan. What I don't understand is that as soon as you grab the tracking device, they know that you have it. And yet they don't take the tracking... The whole point of the traffic device, the tracking device is so if Karajan gets kidnapped, his guards can find him. But if you've stolen the tracking device from the guard and they know you have it, and they also know you're trying to assassinate him, why don't they not use the tracking, turn off his tracking, because then, whatever. <clears throat> this screen is actually poses some difficulty if you want to actually kill these things. But those birds actually saved me. I didn't even realize they were there. And then I definitely didn't mean to use them as a distraction like that. But as soon as it happened, I knew good things were happening. Now that the dog's distracted, it's it's not smelling anything anymore. I've moved that guy on the right out of the way. And because the dog is distracted now, I can take it out. Of course, I f fucked it up, but whatever. Luckily, the... Uh, that last guard was out of the sound radius of the uh, fuck up kill. Must be imagining things. Another piece of luck. I well, we got pretty lucky in this level, this run. But now all I have to do is wait for that guy to come back and we can take him out. Great, now I gotta go check. You don't gotta check on nothing, buddy. You gotta take a sword to the chin. And a new item. Hey, Hooray. look at this. One of our scouts left behind some equipment. The smoke bomb. The smoke bomb is awesome. The smoke bomb gives you cover from enemies. It can also disrupt their laser beams, letting you sneak right through their traps. I pretty much take the smoke bomb as my distraction item every time. Mostly because of the laser disrupting qualities. There. He's headed to the tracking device. If we follow him, he'll lead us straight to it. So that's the special guard with the tracking device that we have to take it from him eventually. One of the, the bonus objectives here is to kill six you, of his guards that are escorting him. Now, it's interesting because if you let him get too far away, you'll fail. You do have to actually follow him. So you might think that you have to sort of kill these guards very quickly, sort of while following him at the same time without letting him get too far ahead of you which would be an interesting challenge, but no. Eventually he stops, and once he does, you don't need to track him anymore. And then you can just come back and uh, kill, all the, kill all the guards for the bonus thing. So this is the only part of the game where um, you're required to use There's basically no way to get through that except with smoke bombs. Uh, no other... Because they know you're going to have them, because you just pick them up. You, come with me. No other part of the game is like that, where it requires you, like, there's just some huge laser fence that there's no way to get through except using a smoke bomb. But, they're great distraction items, and on top of that, they allow you to skip lasers if you need to. And between those two things, to me, they're just the most useful distraction items straight up. Later on, <coughs> the upgrade is a, makes them kind of a poison gas that also disables guards, so you can kill them very easily. Not that useful for the regular dudes, very useful later on for some new enemies that show up, but we'll talk about that when we get to them. So 
So again, the the guy with the tracking device is getting through there. Um, he gets through this next room, which has two of the shield flare gun guys, and then he locks himself into this chamber, and that's all you have to do. He's he's. That's, he just said he's in setting up the security. So now he's frozen and I have free reign to do what I want. Now I could just fall on that dog and do a stealth kill, except I don't have that stealth kill yet. I haven't unlocked it, nor have I bought it. Um, so instead I have to distract him. And there's still a couple guards around here that I left behind while I was doing my thing. Tracking the guy down. I was just making sure I had the dumpster achievement. Apparently I think I already had got it. So, hooray for me, I guess. So you're tracking the guy, there's two ways in. One on the bottom, one on the top, but both ways require you to use the smoke bomb. The only other way is to come right through here, and there's basically no way to get past that guy. I guess you could use a noisemaker behind him and make him turn around, but that's about it. So, just cleaning up, putting some bodies in some dumpsters, getting some points. Um... I found in my first playthrough that I was just just barely making the gold medal point score each time. On this one, I'm being more anal about farming for points. I, I know better how to farm for points, and it's actually I'm actually win, uh, getting the the score thing by quite a large margin. Uh, sometimes to the extent that I could even set off one alarm, only one, and still just barely make it. So that's something to keep in mind if you're really good about farming for points. Um, you can probably still have an alarm and still make it. Just makes it a little more flexible, but it's it's so much more ninja-y. The tracking device is in that office, but it's heavily guarded. We'll have to find another way around. Okay, so there's a big steel suit. This took me a long time to figure out how to do these fucking. It was it was it's not legitimate challenge stuff. It's more. This light shouldn't be out. This feels sort of cheesy, but whatever works, man. This is your Emperor's Abyss ability. You can kill people straight from beneath them, which is very handy. But yeah, I, I had a couple of uh, just miss buttons, like pressing the wrong button. <laughs> and all it takes is one second, and you've screwed yourself in this game. So, uh, it was frustrating. That's why I had a little fade there. I had a couple of attempts at this part. But anyways... That console allowed me to open this uh, air vent. You see the little thing there? It's, it's plus one smoke bomb. I think this is the first time this has happened. When you get to a ch an actual checkpoint, there are more save checkpoints than checkpoint checkpoints. What was that noise? Uh, if that makes any sense, the game saves more often than you get the big checkpoint where the raven flies away and goes. Bah! But. When you get the real check, those those checkpoints, you do at least somewhat refill your items. And this is an interesting little dilemma. Um, right now, I have a dead body in a light. It's keeping the laser from detecting me. If I open the door, that guy that's walking around will see the corpse in the light. That's a problem. However, if I break the light, the dude that's standing right outside the door will hear it and investigate it and see the corpse in the light, and that's bad. So I basically just had to wait for the petroleum guy to go away so I could open the door, kill the guy facing away from me. Now, of course, there's that sleeping dog. So if I piss off this guard, is there someone there? Say by turning off the lights. Uh, the dog could wake up and that could be bad for me. 
So I want to get the guard out of there. So I can take out the dog in peace. Now the guard has hit the switch and turned the lights back on. And I realize, oh shit, he's probably gonna see the dog shining this flashlight around. Let's move on. Now what I'm trying to do is leave the dog's body inside that room, but instead of closing the do door, it keeps flipping the switch. It's a problem. And in my fucking around, <laughs> I waited so long that it, the guard got into a position where he saw me in the light. But it actually turns out for the best, because he just was distracted instead of alarmed, and it allows me to do another hangman sim. So hey, all's well that ends well. Now here's our first part, our first moment where the focus mode really comes into play. There's no real way to hang and uh, blow up those lasers. You probably could do one side and then the other, but it's a lot cooler to do this. One thing to note, the, la the lasers, when you turn them off, sort of flicker and die, but as soon as the... Uh, the power is off. They are instantly. The lasers are instantly off. Uh, in terms of actually hurting. Very easy. Now, regardless of the animation. Take the device, or if you're feeling merciful, steal it from him. Okay, this is the first time we pickpocket a thing, and then I kill the guy. <laughs> pickpocket and then kill. This is a required alarm. They're coming. Run. Because they know that you you've uh, taken the tracking device off this guy's wrist and automatically triggers. So it doesn't. Uh, it's, there's no point uh, penalty for this alarm. The we need to move it out of the way. Uh, so yeah, one. When you turn off a pow power, the lasers are instantly off in terms of their damage hitboxes to you. Second. Um, Oh, uh, too late. Doesn't matter that the dog is working. Because the guy's already dead. Eat it. Um, so that switch calls the elevator down so you can get past it in the, in the shaft. Uh, second, when you focus mode, you do a kind of like a little double jump. Um, so the travel time of the darts, which is quick but not instantaneous, is sort of irrelevant. So you don't have to worry about falling into the lasers while your darts are flying in the air if you get try and drift, because they'll kind of like hop up in the air. And uh, again, they know you have smoke bombs, so you just have to use smoke bombs here. There's no way to get past these lasers. They don't move. A thick liquid drops down the silken thread that hangs above the So. Speaking of uh, falling and using focus mode, here's an opportunity. Of course, here we get to hang instead of fall. If you want to be really cool, you can just fall without hanging. But it's a little safer. <laughs> now this area is a hell of an area. Your problem is you've got dogs on the prowl. Like I said, it's usually most efficient to get rid of the guards and then the dogs. But they are covering each other so well, it's real tough to get one and not the other. But there is this portion right here where that one guard on the left walks over this crate, but the dog doesn't come this far. So as soon as that other guard leaves him alone, I can take out this guard. Then the right hand guard is alone. And uh, an alone guard is a dead guard. That's. Uh, might as well be the motto of this entire Let's Play. A lone guard is a dead guard. In fact, if I ran a security guard company for an evil villain that was being targeted by a heroic ninja assassin, maybe an anti-heroic ninja assassin, that would be my motto. That would be up on every wall. That would be the 1984 style motivational poster on every fucking wall in the, uh, in the Principality. 
a lone guard is a dead guard. If you're alone, get unalone. If you wanted to make a real hard stealth game, that's the way you would do it. And now these dogs being pissed at me is completely relevant because there's no human guards to hear them and call in alarms. So, night night doggies. Poor doggies. And that's basically it for this mission. Good work. Now he can't get away from us. So as you can see, my score is 37,000, or actually with the bonuses, it was 45,800. And I think the, uh, the score limit there, it's either 24,000 or 34,000, I can't read it in my little preview, but either way, I have more than enough for that 3,800 point alarm barrier. So I probably could have set off an alarm, well I definitely could have set off an alarm and still been fine. But regardless, um, that's the third stage, nice and clean, all nine seals. Um, I'm Cuba Libre, and I will see you guys next time on Let's Play Mark of the Ninja.